Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Two guys who are just dripping with Riz. What's up, kids? You're listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Bunker Cheeseman. And I'm Jim Heisenberg Strauss. And on this episode, Indeed Backtracks, the state of sourcing and U.S. job openings drop to a two-year low. Let's do this. All right, guys. Programmatic is all the rage. All the kids are doing it. It's, it's dripping with Riz, like I said in the, in the intro. Well, if you're into programmatic advertising, you got to check out Job Ad X. Job Ad X is a programmatic solution that will help put your jobs on ludicrous speed for the best talent that you can possibly find. Now, in our last episode, we talked about Twitter getting into the job board game. Well, guess who backfills Twitter jobs? It's it's AppCast. And I know a lot of you out there are using AppCast, but do you want your jobs on Twitter with the whole cesspool of garbage content that's out there? Well, if you don't, you owe it to yourself to look at some new pro- programmatic uh, solutions and you owe it yourself to check out Job Ad X, one of our longest standing sponsors. We love them and we know that you will love them too. Find out more by going to Job Ad X, that's J O B A D and the letter X.com. All right, so this is a special Snow Chad bootleg edition of the Chad and Cheese podcast. Now, for those of you who don't know, Chad is gone. He's he's building his European real estate empire. He's emceeing uh, London events, et cetera. So, so it's just me and a co-host, which I'll get to in a second. But this is not going to be edited whatsoever. Uh, if we screw up, we screw up. If we say something, like there's no turning back, right? This is like your favorite Pearl Jam bootleg from 1996. It's going to have scratches. It's going to have you know, the couple in the back making out, it's going to have the dog barking, like all things are going to, so, so be, be warned, that this is what you've signed up for today. And with that, I want to introduce our special, special co-host, Jim Stroud, the man, the myth, the legend is here with me today. Woo-hoo. Jim, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, sir, for having me. I do appreciate it. You bet. So for those of our listeners that don't know, Man, your your career has been Toad's Wild Ride. Uh, give us give us like a thirty second uh, career of Jim, and we'll get to the present day stuff. Sure, uh, twenty years in the biz, uh, sort of an OG. Worked for Microsoft, Google, Siemens, string of startup companies. At one point, I was the global head of recruiting and sourcing strategy for brands at SourceRight. When I was not doing that, I was um, writing books, producing crazy videos and podcasts. And it brought me all to the job that I have today. And I'm so excited about which we will get to in a second, but yeah, you and I met, uh, 18 years ago or so, uh, you haven't aged a bit and I look like Gandalf, (laughs) uh, from, from Lord of the Rings. Well, this is a filter. So, you know, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, what, anyway, I won't, I won't get canceled on this episode. I refuse to do it. Um, You worked at MCI. Yes. That was my first gig in sourcing, 1997. Isn't that crazy? In in college or in high school, I think, I used to try to get people to sign up on MCI, and I would get like a penny for every call they made or something. Like I don't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, MCI, which became Sprint, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. British Telecom bought them and then I think sold them to Sprint. Yeah, we're old, basically. Like that. That's that's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Well, <laughs> Jim, I I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, don't try to don't don't fuck it up. Okay, we'll, we'll figure this out. <laughs> no promises. But so Jim Jim is going to walk through the show uh, with me, and I'm going to guide him through this. Shout out. But we have this thing called shout outs, Jim. Uh, we have little shout outs, little things, little tidbits that have piqued our interest, but don't quite qualify as uh, as serious news. So my my first shout out uh, goes to Riz. Riz, which I mentioned on the show. So uh, dad joke alert. Um, so my kids, I have I have two teenagers and a six-year-old. 
and we have them fill out their Christmas list every year. And, and this year I thought I'd make a good, a, a dad joke. There's no good dad jokes, but I made a dad joke. And I said, Hey kids, did you add Riz to your Christmas list? Because I hear all the kids are looking for Riz. Okay. And it, it, it they, they didn't like, they booed me, I guess. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> it's, it's Ox, Oxford's word of the year. Uh, it's short mm. for charisma. So if you have Riz, you have charisma. Um, in an effort to make this shout out relevant to recruiting, I said, wouldn't it be fun if I went out to uh, your favorite search engines for jobs and looked for Riz to see if there are any job postings with the word Riz in it? Unfortunately, there are no jobs with the word Riz in it. So there's an opportunity for you employers out there. If people are searching Riz, they're going to find your job if you just add the keyword Riz into it. However, LinkedIn, LinkedIn did not let me down, Jim. LinkedIn and <laughs> some, some creative profiles. Uh, let me say that. Uh, so a few, a few profile titles that I found. One said Riz King. He's an hmm. up and comer for sure. Uh, director of Riz was one that I saw. Uh, the master of Skibbity Riz. Not sure what his core competency was. <laughs> and my my favorite uh, profile on LinkedIn with the word Riz was certified Riz master at your mom's house. So that was that was that was that was certainly Hi, that was my favorite one. So anyway, uh, it beat out prompt situationship mm. which i'm not quite mm. sure uh what that is and swifty which with the year taylor swift has had she was just named uh time magazine's person of the year so swifty yeah. got beat out by riz but my shout out goes out to riz what you got wow wow uh, my shout out goes um to itana uh, i think i'm pronouncing it right she is the first uh, digital influencer who is of Spanish descent, if that's the right way to say it these days. And <laughs> Hi, <puppy. laughs> now she has pink hair and she has um, a million followers on Instagram. And not only that, she's had deals with Dolce Gabbana. Uh, she has deals with uh, Couture and some other big names. Mm -hmm. And the person behind it, uh, the company behind it, they were having issues with um, the female influencers that they were trying to employ, uh, uh -huh. being late, not taking the job seriously enough, whatever. So they say, you know what, forget all that. Let's just get a digital influencer that we can control, who will always mm -hmm. be on time, work 24 seven, and it worked. Yep. So uh, she, Itana is really just one of several digital influencers out there, believe it or not. Yep. So I see this as a shot across the bow to only fans yeah. <laughs> for sure um shot across the bow to um adult entertainers because these digital uh people are only going to get more and more uh realistic so yep. after a while uh, a lot of a lot of uh people will have to get a real job so to speak no uh, doubt is, i i and yeah. i i've called this I'll, i've called for this on the show for a while and it's it's going to take time but look, dudes don't know the either they don't know the difference or they don't give a shit. And and yeah. we've covered this on the show, women and, and not just pictures, but video. And the and the the conversation is getting better. And like, there's going to be a day where OnlyFans is out of business because you can go to whatever it, it becomes, unless OnlyFans becomes this, where you pay you know nine ninety nine a month to have as many girls do whatever the hell you want with whomever they want all the time uh, at your fingertips. And when VR becomes a thing and the yeah. audio is like a human, I mean, uh, yeah, this is going to a place where making millions on OnlyFans, showing your ass is, is, is it's on the clock because AI is going to take this stuff over. We can talk about the, uh, what this means for the human race and dating <laughs> and the demise of like civilization. But we'll, we'll save that for the next time you're on uh, five years from now, we're probably going to be in Armageddon uh, by, by then anyway. Yeah, and, and speaking of, of, of nakedness in real life, uh, my next shout out goes to the Minneapolis stripper awards. Yes. You probably didn't know that there were stripper awards, let alone that there are local stripper awards. So around a hundred strippers gathered 
for the Minneapolis Stripper Awards this week. The event aimed to celebrate strippers uh, while also highlighting the need to unionize. See, I brought it back to employment, which is what we do on, on the show. The awards had nine categories, including the prestigious Miss New Boobies Award. This is for dancers <laughs> who have been performing for, for less than a year. The mm -hmm. Meg the Stallion Award for performers working toward a degree which we've all met those strippers in uh, in school working on their nursing degree, I'm sure. And the most <laughs> sought after award of the night was the HBIC award. If you don't know it, go Google HBIC because again, I don't want to get canceled on this week's show <laughs> without Chad here. So that is my next shout out, the Minneapolis Stripper Awards. That escalated quickly. I'm going to have to do some research to uh, verify your claims. So, you're in Atlanta, uh, right? To, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm in Atlanta. Are you in Atlanta? That's the, strip, the stripper capital, yeah. Atlanta. There's got to be a, a stripper awards in Atlanta. Oh, I'm sure there is. That might be I mean, the national. No either, of... either there or Tampa or Houston or Vegas, maybe, are the, uh, yeah, are the yeah. stripper there's, awards. There's no shortage of those clubs that I, yeah. I've heard of. I, I don't frequent them. I've just heard of, <laughs> of several not. of them. Of course uh, not. Within proximity of my Research. My Research. <laughs> Research is what it is. Yes, yes, yes. You got another shout out? I do, actually. I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Sam Altman. He's uh, been through the fire and now he's out uh, with all the drama. You know that I heard about him uh, leaving OpenAI, going to Microsoft and OpenAI said, hey, hey, we sorry, come back, you know, <laughs> and now he's facing uh, competition from Google that released a new AI, uh, Gemini, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, word on the street is that the Gemini L L large language model is uh, better than chat GPT. Who knows? Who cares? Maybe a spin. But mm -hmm. I like it because it's going to produce, bring it back to jobs, new jobs, mm -hmm. new careers. Because when you have this kind of cutthroat competition, these companies are, not, are going to want to hire the best, which is going to just raise the, the game up for everyone. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a good to have a growth industry. like it. Well, better than chat GPT, <laughs> but is it better than free stuff, Jim? Uh, probably not. Mm. So I want to talk to our audience about free stuff from Chad and Cheese. That's right. If you love free t-shirts and free booze, you're at the right podcast. We got t-shirts from our friends at, uh, at JobGet. We've got bourbon, a selection from Chad, one for me from Text Kernel. Uh, we got free beer from our friends at Aspen Tech Labs. And if it's your birthday in any particular month, we have rum with plum. That's right. If it's your birthday month, you could win a great bottle of rum from our friends at Plum. Can you feel the tension in the air right now? I know I can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. That's right. And that brings us to this week's birthdays. That's right. Another trip around the sun for our fans. Matt Miller, Kim Stewart, Lars Coos, Chase Johnson, Patrick Hodgden, Lana Schumann, Craig Anderson, Bob Scruggs, Matt Stubbsy Stubbs, Jeff King, Brandy Dawson, Tanya True Love, Anoop Gupta, CEO over at Seeked Out, and, and apparently some chick named Julie Ann Sowash celebrate birthday! a birthday this week. So happy birthday to them. By the way, Chad is uh, in, in London this week. Uh, he's finishing up a, a stint with TA Tech which will end our travels uh, for this year. But if you want to find out where we're going to be, the usual suspects, uh, Wreckfest, Unleash, HR Tech, House of HR, you name it, we're probably going to be there. Go to chadcheese.com, click the events link to keep track of where Chad and I are going. And also, while I'm doing a little housekeeping here, uh, every month we do a show called The Chad and Cheese Podcast Does Data. We've partnered with Toby Dayton at LinkUp to go over the uh, the jobs report every month. We look into his data, which is used by some of the best Wall Street firms out there. Uh, we dig into what's going on uh, from a, a molecular level, and what's we bring it down to the Chad and Cheese audience. We we take away the 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 the, the, the Wall Street speak and bring it down to Main Street. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, it's only on YouTube. Uh, so check out YouTube.com. Uh, at Chad Cheese. We do that because we have the best charts and graphs in the business, which we can't really relay over audio, but make sure that uh, you check that out. Uh, a new one is coming out this week as a new report is being released.
Which brings us to our fantasy football leaderboard of the week. Do you play? Uh, do you play fantasy, Jim? No, nah, not football. <laughs> Different fantasy leagues. Board games? I don't, no, I don't want to get into it. Okay, what kind of what kind of ask sick me after games, the show? Kind of sick fantasy <laughs> games are you playing? Okay, so uh, we we play fantasy football, uh, sponsored by our friends at Factory Fix. The season's almost over. Uh, the top four get to the playoffs. This is really the final week of the of the uh, regular season. Here is your top 12 uh, leaderboard. And number one, it's been there almost the whole season. Uh, Michelle Sergeant Peppers is right there, followed by Marcy Mallrat, uh, Dina Perro for Pyros at number three, Jagged Little Jill Patterson at number four, uh, Chadbot Sowash. Uh, no one wants to have a conversation with that Chadbot, by the way, uh, FYI. Uh, number six, Joe Baga Dixon is uh is in that spot number seven brent <laughs> brent brent losey uh number seven uh number number eight joel it's all good achievement that's me uh number nine cool mo dean osner number 10 jasper uh the last european to make it into the league uh spanjart because he frankly just sucked after whining about why won't you let a european play fantasy football number 11 dennis breakfast lunch and tupper Number 12, the caboose, Kristen, Champagne Urbana. And that is your fantasy football leaderboard. Well, Jim, uh, when, when I have a co-host on, I like to talk, just dig a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, you, you've been around for a long time, have some great insight. Let's talk about sourcing. Yes. And I'm going to give I'm going to give my historical perspective on sourcing and then I'm going to hand it to you to give us the current state of sourcing and the future yep. of sourcing. So sourcing for me goes back uh, really to like Shally business, like foldable business card with bullion strings and search engines no one knew about and don't exist anymore uh, that you yep. could use to find people that evolved into companies hiring solved hire tool that had all the you know people data and then all the bullion was built in like what do you need of course linkedin is growing this whole this whole time uh linkedin sues everybody uh throws out cease and desist you can't take our data um and basically effectively puts a lot of people out of business um there's a, a big pivot in the industry uh profiles become commoditized you have uh f you know for 9.99 you can access 100 million profiles that brings the price down for everybody. Hire tool becomes hire easy, more of a marketing platform. Uh, hiring solve goes out of business. Uh, seek out is, I think, kind of finding its way around. They went through around layoffs recently. So from my perspective, the sourcing profession is in a real state of flux right now. So I'm going to pass it to you to kind of give us the state of sourcing your role at, at SourceCon, what the show has become, the future of the conference, and maybe the, the future of, of the profession. Sure, sure. I, I think you summed up uh, sourcing in a uh, very, uh, very accurate way. Uh, we are. This is why I have an award winning podcast, Jim, for, <laughs> for six years running. Yeah. Because I'm old. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sourcing is in a state of flux. I think a lot of people are concerned. I, I hear it when I'm um, at the conference. I, I talk to people um, virtually and in person. And if they're in the recruiting uh, industry, there is a lot of concern. People are looking at the AI technology out there and they're thinking, wow, AI is here. So uh, my days are numbered. And I say, well, not necessarily so. I just think that when new technology is introduced, you know, some jobs will be uh, will be displaced, but then new ones will replace them. You know, just as Netflix took out Blockbuster back in the day, for you young folks, uh, there used to be a time when you got DVDs in the mail, <laughs> and it wasn't uh, streamed. But you know, now with Netflix, you have the streaming technology, and so that brought about a bunch of new jobs: content creation, digital marketing, data analysis, software development, cybersecurity stuff, just name a few. So. There will be new jobs that I think sourcing will morph into or will also incorporate. And I'll make a prediction on three different jobs, if I may, of the sure. future, which will probably start to begin to see uh, next year. Um, one job that I predict that's going to um, appear in 2024 or shortly thereafter is what I'm calling the algorithmic recruiting analyst. And that's somebody who analyzes the performance and effectiveness of AI algorithms using HR tech tools. 
uh, someone who optimizes uh, uh, algorithms for better outcomes, maybe tweaking the dials a little bit for more diversity or provide more insight, sort of like um, it's sort of an old school uh, comparison, tweaking the Boolean strings to make sure that the AI is, is getting the right candidates or as many candidates as possible. Um, another prediction I've seen in the very near future is the ethical AI compliance officer. Okay. Right? And that's somebody who makes sure that AI tools are in compliance with local, state, and federal regulations. You know, Biden, um, President Biden recently issued an executive order on AI mm -hmm. to promote, um, it's a quote, safe, secure, and trustworthy development of the use of artificial intelligence. And when I heard that, um, that just tells me that new regulations are on the horizon and, you know, mm -hmm. you already have a few out there, like New York City, Local Law 144 and others, um, but it's going to be a whole bunch. And when you're not in compliance of all these regulations, it's going to cost you money. So they're going to, I think it's going to be a job where someone's whole job is to make sure that you protect the company from having to pay fines. And then third, uh, which I know for sure I will likely see uh, next year, is something I'm calling the AI recruitment trainer, right? That's somebody who comes in and trains uh, sourcing teams on how to use AI tools and platforms. There's so many tools out there. And this person is say, hey, is going to come in and say, hey, you know what? Let's connect ChatGPT to Zapier and look at all the things you can do. Look how much time it's going to save you. you know. And this is uh, by doing these things that I'm going to train you on. Your team is going to be more efficient. Uh, you'll be able to do more with less, that kind of thing. Uh, so somebody like um, Eric Jacob, uh, if you listen to Eric, shout out to you. Uh, Eric Jacob or Ronnie Bratcher or somebody like that, uh, or any number of people from uh, – what I call the source kind OGs mm -hmm. can do a really good job with this. So those are my all three right, predictions. There. All right, all right. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. <laughs> so let's uh, let's get to SourceCon real quick. Um, yeah, yeah. If memory serves me, and again, I'm old, you're, there is no SourceCon without you. Were you one of the original? <laughs> you flatter me, sir. You flatter me. Am I off base uh, on that? Well, back in the day, back in the day, it was um, uh, Leslie O'Connor, Rob yeah. McIntosh, Earl Mann, and myself. We were yeah. the four horsemen, so to speak, behind it. Um, I didn't put the money up, so I almost feel kind of sketchy saying that I'm one of the four horsemen. But I was uh, the MC for SourceCon yeah. and promoted yeah. it for the first few years. So a lot of people still remember me from back then to now because yeah. um, I really got into video promotions and producing videos to promote SourceCon back then. And I've been back several times over the years, keynoting um, at the event. And um, uh, as um, luck or providence, whatever you want to call it, is have it, I am now the editor of SourceCon, yeah. which means that I help to plan the event. I help to create the content on the event. And I also promote and manage the online community of really, really talented people who have a love for sourcing. I'm very, very blessed. Shout out to the SourceCon community. Shout out to the good folks over at ERE, one love. One love. You know, I, uh, real quickly, the, the conference universe fascinates me. And I've been around for a while again, uh, back to me being old. But, you know, ERE used to be the go-to conference for everybody. SourceCon was sure. like the freak show, you know, <laughs> the, the people. Let, I mean, I say that. I say that yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it was it's, like, it's sort of like, it's sort of like, it was like, the S, it was like the SEOs back in marketing, right? Like all the SEOs yeah. got together and the, like, and they were the freaks, right? But they, it was like, they knew something other people didn't. 
And SourceCon exactly. think, always felt well, like that to me. They they had they spoke each other's language. They saw things that other people didn't see, um, mm -hmm. and it was always fun. Pandemic hits. You know, there's a new a new crop of conferences: the Unleashes, the Wreckfests. Um, what's the state of the conference? What how how were the vendors changing? Like you talked about your predictions. The vendors used to be pretty straightforward, like pro, search profiles and like. Uh, or contract people to, to do searches. How are the vendors different and how is, how is the conference different and where do you hope to take it with a whole new crop of competition out there to, to sure. get people's well, mind share? With the sponsors, we just uh, announced um, the first ever AI product showcase. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, several vendors, uh, five minutes to um, uh, showcase what they do and give the audience five minutes to ask them questions. There's so many tools out there and we're going to allow uh, not, I guess we're going to allow a select few to present to the community, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Danielle at ERE.net if someone's interested in that. But we're going to have them um, just sort of showcase because a lot of the tools out now, everything is like uh, powered by artificial intelligence in some, in some manner. Yeah. So, so there's that. In terms of the look and feel of SourceCon, originally back in the day, it would have been a fair comparison to say SourceCon was to recruiting conferences as DEF CON was to the security industry or Comic Con. So if you could combine Comic Con, that's a conference for people into the, in comics and Marvel movies, things like that. Uh -huh. You combine um, Comic Con with DEF CON and add in recruiting and sourcing, you would have SourceCon. You know, um, over time, it, it, it felt like it was sort of straying away, sort of lost its sort of mojo in that sense. Yeah. But I'm trying to bring sexy back, so to speak. So um, <laughs> these sound effects. <laughs> so uh, bringing it back to that old school source con vibe where you have the, okay. to your point, the, the weird people or the people who are just really passionate about sourcing, really passionate about AI and recruiting and sourcing and showing them the latest tools and tricks uh, all in one place. It is the okay. place to be for that. Well, with AI, I know a lot of people have questions. They have a lot of uh, ideas or how AI can work and, and making me a better sourcer. So I, I'm kind of with you. I think there'll be some new and inventive ways that we, we I can't even see that vendors and people will come up with uh, to take sourcing to a whole different place. Uh, mm -hmm. give, us, give us the where, the when, uh, and any discounts uh, that you might have for the, the Chad and Cheese listeners? Sure. You can um, get all the information at sourcekind.com. That's S-O-U-R-C-E-C-O-N.com. And you can get 10% off by using the uh, discount code sourcekind10. And you can also get 100% off if you contribute four articles to the SourceCon blog. Uh, those articles will be peer-reviewed by a lot of the SourceCon OGs. So if you want 100% off, uh, write a very, very good article, four very, very good articles and submit them. And once they're peer reviewed, uh, you'll get free ticket. All right. Oops, winning. <laughs> well, thanks, Jim. Where can they learn more about SourceCon? Yeah, uh, go to SourceCon.com. S-O-U-R-C-E-C-O-N.com. Easy enough. Easy enough. <laughs> Now to the news in no particular order. Indeed, my God, we never talk about Indeed on the show, Jim. Uh, Indeed is discontinuing <laughs> pay per application or what the kids are calling PPA pricing uh, set to end in less than two weeks. Wow, that was that was a quick decision. Uh, after replacing pay-per-click for most employers, Initially favored by smaller employers, PPA faced criticism for complexity and unex unexpected chargers, despite changes indeed cited it as an unsuccessful experiment. Focusing now on pay for performance models. Jim, I know you don't have a lot to say about this particular uh, item, but do you have any, any thoughts on Indeed, what the community uh, thinks about Indeed, and, and maybe about this, this uh, confusion with pricing? I think that Indeed could learn something from McDonald's. You know, uh, McDonald's has been around for a while, but they have the same basic menu. 
Uh, even though people still, it, it amazes me people walking to McDonald's and they sit there and look at the menu. Like it hadn't changed in 20 years, no. <laughs> basically, unless they, unless they bring back the McRib or something, right? Um, it's something about keeping your business processes simple, keeping it simple for the customers. Um, cool to introduce something new every now and then, but there's something to be said about consistency. You know, they'll make it, they'll make it difficult. Uh, the easier you make it for someone to give you money, the better, the easier it is for you to get their money. So. Yeah, that's what I say. About and, that. and, and pay-per-click uh, 20 years on is kind of a universal thing. People understand you click on my ad and I pay you money for the traffic. Uh, you know, every time you try to throw in complexity, 60% of the time it works every time. So <laughs> we talked about this when they launched it. And um, mm. the fact is, Google can't make this work. Google back in the mid 2000s had like, you know, pay per purchase. So someone clicks on an ad and if they buy your pair of shoes, then you only pay us uh, for people buying the shoes or you pay us a percentage of what people right. spent. Uh, you can imagine you can imagine the level of fraud, uh, deception that people tried to get like less, like not pay Google or people that were using AdSense for getting so if Google can't figure out a pay per acquisition model, uh, then it should tell you something that you can't either. Uh, Indeed is going through a real period of hubris right now. Uh, they're going through a period of, of fear, frankly, uh, with, with Google for jobs, with LinkedIn growing, with programmatic uh, AppCast and others breathing down their neck. Um, Indeed is making some really dumb decisions. And I think this was one of them. To think that they could just do this uh, really reeks of, of, of hubris. I understand the idea of it because it's hard to have a conversation as an Indeed salesperson and say, look, I know you're paying uh, AppCast 12 cents a click and you're paying us 84 cents a click, but we're, we're better, right? Like that's a hard conversation to have. Like, why should I pay you double for the click that I'm giving someone else? when I'm still getting the results that I need. So they, they wanted to create confusion of like, well, no, it's not per click, it's per applicant or it's per mm. interested interested candidate or whatever, whatever model. So they want to sort of dilute the waters and confuse people. Well, it looks like they went too far uh, and are, are backtracking on, on what they, they've had to do. Um, it the other be. thing is there's a company, a private equity firm called Value Act that just gave mm. a bunch of money to recruit holdings, which is Indeed's parent company. Well, you know mm. that when private equity comes in the door, they take a you know, magnifying glass to everything and they say, okay, what's, what's frivolous? What isn't working? What is working? How do we cut costs? Um, clearly there was a strategy meeting where someone said, why are we doing this? We're, we're losing customers. They don't understand it. So maybe there was at least some uh, some focus or refocus with uh, with the, the private equity coming in uh, that made them uh, make this move. I don't think it's the end of bad moves for Indeed. I think they're going to continue because the world isn't going to change. Google is still going to march on. LinkedIn is still going to march on. Programmatic is still only going to get bigger. AppCast is buying agencies. And, and so IPOs are going to come down the pike. It's only going to get tougher for Indeed. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but I think Dumber moves are going to come in by them. Maybe new products, new brands, new uh, extensions, maybe consulting, maybe more recruiting and staffing. Uh, but the the pay per click life only has so much to live at this point, and the PPA didn't work. And uh, I think the PPC lifespan is limited at this point. I think when you're so big, uh, to your point about the hubris, you get so big, you figure you can do whatever you want. Um, but I do think that the way things are. What Indeed needs to be looking at in the corner of their eye is uh, companies merging and being acquired. Like I heard about, um, there's some talk about Paramount Plus um, doing some kind of deal with, with Apple. Apple Plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're both hurting on the streaming wars and their, and their library is, is really lacking compared to Amazon yeah. uh, and Netflix. So if a lot of companies, because of these interesting times, start teaming up, and, and merging and they start, you know, uh, coming together like Voltron robot or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and take, it might be big enough at some point to take on indeed. I think the real problem is no major competitor. 
or no, not not big enough to really cause them to shift what they're doing. It needs yeah. more competition. That's what I'm saying. Well, back to sourcing, right? Like at, at one point, profiles became commodities. Like they're out yeah. there. Who you know, like. LinkedIn has built a walled garden around their stuff and they've done a good job of protecting that, but there's no protection for job postings. Companies don't give a shit if you scrape their, their ATS and grab their job and throw it out there. Now they may care, but they're not doing anything about it. So right. as jobs get to become commodities, it's like, it's a race to the bottom of pricing. And per, to me, the programmatic, you know, uh, wave that's, that's happened is, is, is a mirror image of what's going on with any commodity out there is a race to the bottom. So for me, um, indeed has, has nowhere to go except like milk this thing for as long as they can, unless they do come up with some miraculous, uh, you know, ninth, fourth, fourth quarter comeback. Um, I think they're going to, they're going to share a faith that, that monster shared. I mean, mo we, how many times we talk about monster hubris? you know, 15 yeah. years ago, you know, 10 years yeah. ago. Uh, I never you know, would have it, thought Monster would be gone. I always thought Monster would, would reign supreme forever from back in the day, you know? But uh, it happens. I mean, look, we're going to talk about job openings uh, in our next story. Job boards should be crushing it. Crushing you it. Would like think. Zip Recruiter, indeed. Like every job site should be crushing it. Unfortunately, they're not. Um, and it's that race to the bottom. Uh, for job advertising, but enough about Indeed. We'll get back to them in a in a second. Let's let's talk really quickly about job openings. So in October, U.S. job openings fell to 8.7 million, the lowest since March of 2021, indicating a slower hiring pace amidst higher interest rates. Despite declines, job availability remains historically high. Hiring slowed from previous years, yet added 239,000 jobs monthly in 2023, reflecting a resilient job market amid rising borrowing costs and easing inflation. To put this in context, job openings reached a record of more than 12 million in March of 2022. The last time job openings hovered around 9 million like it is now was in the spring of 2021. Jim, what do you make of the drop and how should recruiters be looking at the news? Every time I hear a news report these days about job market jobs down, but it's not, it's not really so bad because you have this over here. My thinking is that the, the, my inner cynic comes out and I'm thinking, okay, it's a presidential election year, right? Mm -hmm. Ele election season, right? So there's going to be spin all over the place. I think uh, that we are in a recession, um, whether it's an official recession per se. Uh, when I go to the grocery store, uh, <laughs> I think recession. I see gas prices, I'm thinking recession. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong, but that's it just feels like we're in one. So any report that I see, um, I, I take over a grain of salt because I said, you know, th their people in power want things to look a certain way. Now, after the election is over, then we may see a bit more reality of, of how things are. Um, but, th but there's that. But that and also how I get a lot of requests from other recruiters and people in the business. Hey, do you know who's hiring? That kind of thing. Um, it was a took a minute for me to, to land the gig that I have now. So I know that although jobs may be plentiful, as they say in the media, I know it's not quite the story for everyone. Uh, that being said, um, I would like to throw out a couple of tips for recruiters who are looking looking for work, uh, if I may. So this is something that um, recruiters and sourcers, pretty much anyone can do. Go over to Google News or any news site for that matter and do a search on Series B in quotes and funding, right? Mm -hmm. Or Series C in quotes and funding. Um, when companies are in a uh, raising money <clears throat> and in their in their Series B or Series C C round that means that they're in a position to expand their operations. Usually when you get the series B and C, they are going to do more hiring. They're going to buy more products so they can sell more stuff. So those are companies that are poised to expand. Those are companies you want to pursue because they got money and they're growing. So um, I, if you do a search, I, I did a search uh, just a little while ago and I saw several uh, companies there. Now in Google, you can refine your your search by you know recent or the past week or past month, whatever. Yep. 
do a search for a recent week and you got, you know, fresh meat, so to speak, <laughs> of companies that may not even have a job um, for a recruiter uh, posted uh, because it's so new, but there, now's the time to network and sort of get your way in that way. Also, what you may want to do if you're currently working and you're concerned about how long you're going to continue working there, I would say diversify your skill set as much as possible. Maybe ask somebody how you can help with workforce planning or employ, employer branding, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then if you are in management, um, I would say strongly, this is the time to um, uh, uh, really hire, actually, believe it or not. Because when you have a recession, or at least it feels like a recession to a lot of people, a yeah. lot of people are going to be nervous. So a lot of the A players that would normally wouldn't even look your way, um, they may be open to an email uh, to a conversation because they're thinking, okay, I'm working now, but things are kind of iffy. Uh, yeah, maybe I will entertain an offer or at least talk to someone about that. Yeah. And then yeah. if they happen to be laid off, um, then you may be able to get them at a lower salary that you can afford versus um, you probably wouldn't be able to afford them if, if the economy was doing great. Yeah. And then, of course, when recession is over, a lot of your A talent, they might be recruited away to other places for higher salaries. But at that time, your company might be in a better position because of all the contributions of the A players that got you to that point. So got it. That's another one. one. <laughs> <laughs> so... So my right. perspective is what's <laughs> happening is exactly what the Fed wants to happen. Look, we flooded the we mm. flooded the we flooded the house with money during COVID, uh, what six trillion dollars, whatever it is. Uh, so we had a big party, and we're coming yeah. down from that. So inflation, we got to get that under control. It's at least inflation has stopped growing. Uh, the market needs to cool down. Jobs need to come down. Like more houses need to like everything needs to slow the hell down, or we're going to overheat. We talked about yeah. uh, this on the Chad and Cheese podcast. Does uh, does data with Toby Dayton? What's happening is what the what the Feds want to have happen. Um, so, from my perspective, twelve million jobs is ludicrous. I mean, that was that was nuts. It was like three opens uh, three openings for every human being that can work. Like that is not sustainable. I don't know how many were actual real jobs. I think there was a lot of fraud in the system that we go. may never we may embrace never know inner, about. Embrace your inner cynic. Yeah, like, the, the, like I'm not like things are getting under control. I think it's normalizing. Mm. This doesn't scare me at all. Uh, you can throw in the word Goldilocks. It's like not too hot, not too cold. It's kind of just right. I'm glad that the labor market is is holding up. We're hearing Jamie Dimon and some other big banks talk about recession. I think you're right in that we've seen a rolling recession. Mm -hmm. I think if you're in tech a year ago, it was a recession. Uh, if you're in energy now, it's a risk. So like it's hit different uh, industries at different times. It hasn't kind of hit all of us at the same time. Uh, but yeah, you're right. What's the old adage? Uh, if you're if your neighbor's out of work, it's a recession. If you're out of work, it's a depression. Uh, so depending <laughs> on where you are, uh, it could mean a totally different thing. Well, let's keep this thing going. Uh, when we get back from the uh, the break, we'll talk more about Indeed. Well, people probably know TextKernel uh, as the best resume parsing solution out there. Uh, they bought Sovereign, a longtime uh, Chad and Cheese sponsor a few years ago, and they're still the best parser, but they're branching out. They're into matching, semantic search, sourcing, APIs, you name it. And they're diving into AI like their hair is on fire, leveraging LLMs for recruitment. Whether you're a staffing agency, corporate HR, staffing vendor, or management consultancy, you got to be using text kernel. Okay. Customers like Randstad, Manpower and Kelly are already using text kernel and they have been for a while. Uh, and you can be in really good company. By the way, uh, they acquired a company called Jabati a few months back to take things to a whole new level when it comes to conversational AI and enhancements and technology. Guys, you owe it to yourself to check out text kernel. If you care at all, about evolving your TA strategy. Learn more today by going to textkernel.com. That's T-E-X-T-K-E-R-N-E-L.com. All right, Jim. Mm. It's an Indeed double rainbow on this week's episode. <laughs> so Indeed, uh, following the pandemic, is discontinuing their monthly, and I'm using air quotes, you days. That's Y-O-U mm. days. Uh, these are mental mm. health days for employees 
globally stating uh, reduced vacation bookings. The move aligns with a trend of companies reevaluating pandemic introduced perks due to budget constraints. Despite this, Indeed maintains unlimited paid time off and remote work options, also extending parental leave to 26 weeks. Jim, it's a double rainbow for Indeed featuring our favorite company, or at least one of them. Again, what are your thoughts on Indeed trashing you days? I understand the business case for dropping that benefit, um, but I, my concern or my hope is that it doesn't, spill over into other mental health benefits, right? Um, and I said it because there was a uh, survey that was published this week, actually, I think it was this week, by the American Psychological Association. And they reported that over 56% of the psychologists they surveyed had no openings for new patients, 56%. And among those who keep wait lists, the average uh, wait times were three months or longer. And nearly 40% of those said, their wait list had grown in the past year. So there's clearly a need for uh, mental health um, assistance. Um, that mental health benefits are needed across the board. So I, I, I sort of shudder when I hear a company saying they're not going to offer as many mental health benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just, I, again, I understand their business case for dropping it, but I hope it doesn't spill over to other mental health businesses, putting them, benefits, putting those in danger because they're needed. Yeah. Another one. So I'm going to give them an applause on the 26 week parental leave. Uh, m most companies aren't doing uh, 26 something. weeks. So, yeah. 26 weeks for parental. Wow, leave. That's uh, they're extending, extending that. Uh, now everyone in Europe and Canada is like, that's still not long enough, but at least in America, we're, we're making some progress on that end. Um, I always have a problem. If, if you are a market leader, in solutions for HR, you should be a, a model of what treating employees correctly should look like because all mm. of your customers are in this industry. And if, if we can't get employee care right, why should we expect our customers uh, that, are, that are doing this to get it right? So from that perspective, I think Indeed is falling down a little bit on what they could have been this like beacon of this is how you treat employees. Here's how we here's how we do it, and you can do it the same way. To be cutting something like this, I think, just is is a little bit short sighted, and and leaving I think what is an obligation to be a, a, a model of what it is to treat employees well. They've done a, a pretty good PR job of saying like, well, we've we've put back the things that we lost during the pandemic, so we're taking away some of the stuff that we gave during the pandemic. Um, that's a really nice slick PR move uh, to kind of to cover your asses. Um, <laughs> companies that have uh, unlimited time off generally have no time off. I've worked at companies where there's no uh, two week period or you got to take it or you lose it. It's just kind of like, hey, you're an adult. Take whatever time off you want. And what happens is nobody takes time off because they feel like, well, I'm letting the team down or I'm slacking, I'm certainly going to take more than the next person over. So everyone just ends up working like slaves and no one takes time off. What I've learned is you have to have a, a period and say, you got to take the time off or you lose it. And then everybody takes their vacation time. So I, I don't, I don't trust companies are like, we have unlimited time off because you, you basically have no time off uh, when you have that. Uh, that is your thing. The other thing, again, back to Val value act, their, their, their private equity firm. Again, there was a meeting and they said, how do we cut shit out? How do we get people more, uh, more productive? How do we get, how do we kick the people in the ass and get them back to work? And this was, I'm sure one of those things that they took out and was easy. If I'm an indeed employee, I'm looking for more cost cutting efforts coming down the pike from value act. Uh, I don't want to say layoffs, but would I be surprised if some layoffs come come down the pike? No, I would not. So for me, like this is maybe the tip of the iceberg for Indeed's cost cutting. It starts with you days and pretty soon there are no happy days whatsoever. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do they have, Sorry. um, does, link, does Indeed have, um, uh, RTO policy turn to office policy? They are pretty, well, they are pretty, uh, 
I'm sure they do. I, I don't know it offhand, but they are pretty flexible uh, with the with the the time uh, away from the office. Although they've spent a lot of money on real estate, particularly in Austin, to yeah. get people into an office. So uh, I think they're on a hybrid model uh, at the moment. When I hear a big company, notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> I feel like you had a point there before are... I cut you off. Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, oh well, yeah. Well, point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say that I feel that when a large company like that um, announces return to office, in the back of my mind, the cynical side of my brain says, "Tell me you're laying off without saying you're laying off." Um, yeah. Get people to quit so you don't have to pay unemployment insurance. Yep. Yep. Um, or severance packages. It's a win-win from the company's perspective. Yep. So. Yep. And Chad and I talk all the time about boiling the frog. It just, it starts slowly. And like, before you know it, you're back to work five days a week. Your yep. benefits are the way they used, like everything is back to the way it was before uh, the have, world changed. Have you heard of this thing called the, um, the wall of worry? Have you heard that term? No. I just came across it yesterday. So, uh, there's a low demand for office space <laughs> yeah. these days. And um, it's been called a one trillion wall of worry, people in, in the office space leasing thing, because uh, that's how much they think they're going to be losing in, by the end of 2024, a trillion dollars. And they're concerned about it and all the banks that they're in debt to are concerned yeah. about it. It's interesting. So I think RTO is going to continue uh, for a lot of reasons, not just to lay people off. Um, but yeah, who, who do you think owns those commercial, uh, buildings, Jim, the rich <laughs> people do who owns the yeah. companies, the rich people, the rich people mm -hmm. want you back in the offices that they own. I mean, it just, it just makes sense. They're just going to make it as slow and steady as they can. I think cities like New York, Chicago, like bigger cities, you're just going to go back to work. Like, I think that that stuff is going to be good where I worry about. Uh, the Clevelands, the Detroits, like the smaller, do those downtowns ever come back? Um, well, we'll see. Some of the, there's, there's a movement now going on. Um, I think is in New York and parts of Chicago. They're trying to kick it off where they want to convert the office buildings into residential. So some of those yeah. office buildings could be turned into residential. But the, the problem with that is that some people don't want to go back to the big city anymore because there's too much drama. For some folks, depending on what city, you know, uh, if you know, you know. And so they're thinking like, I want to say I hear in the birds because they get a little crazy there in the city. Um, yeah. So I don't know if it's going to work. Plus, a lot, of those, a lot of those buildings aren't zoned for plumbing or, you know, the things yeah. that we think of in apartments. Uh, yeah. So you have to change the laws and the zoning regulations. So it's it's a big pain in the ass for sure. It's it's not a flip the switch and, and have a high luxury apartments, you know, in downtown New York. It just doesn't quite work like that. Yeah. Another one. All right, well, let's get from one uh, job site to another, or at least a new one anyway. Remote has launched Remote Talent, a marketplace integrated with its HR platform. Employers access global talent for local, hybrid, and fully remote roles, handling onboarding and compliance seamlessly. Job seekers find remote roles with detailed filters. The platform, soon integrating AI and global knowledge tools, caters to remote work, aiming for what it calls a better hiring experience. Remote also recently launched Freelancer Hub, a platform for freelancers to manage operational tasks. Upwork and Fiverr are losing sleep over remote talent. But Jim, what are your thoughts on remote's move into job board status? I think it's a good move for them. Um, I, I, I scanned over their the website just a little while ago and yeah, I probably missed a couple of things here and there, but if I were them, I would do my best to position remote as like the number one champion of the digital nomad movement. Like if I wanted to be a digital nomad and just go from place to place, working different exotic locations around the world, remote.com should be the number one place to go for that. 
Um, I should see travel information on how to get travel visas, uh, guides on working abroad. I think they do have some guides on working abroad. Uh, but the one, the number one thing I would do, probably before even doing all that, is either hire or create a travel influencer to produce videos about working all over the world. Like I saw their, I looked at their YouTube channel. That's free advice. <laughs> I looked at their YouTube channel, and I expected to see uh, someone saying, "Hey, this is me, and I'm in Bali, and I'm working here as a software developer." And, this, and then I go to the beach, and then I do this kind of stuff. Uh huh. I, that kind of video would go viral outside of the job seeker market, and that would really promote their brand. It probably worked for any any of their competitors, uh, but I'm thinking remote. But so something like that, mm -hmm. they should be all over that. I was wow. surprised not to see that. Maybe wow. I overlooked it, but they should be doing. All that. right, all right, all right. Jim likes it. Jim likes it. I do not like it, uh, and here's uh, why. Um, so historically. Companies that get a lot of money, like Remote has, does some dumb shit. They lose hmm. focus. They get into stuff that they shouldn't be getting into. Uh, they they start diluting their talent and what they're what they're thinking about and how they innovate the main product. Um, I'm re I'm reminded of Simply Hired, uh, a company you you know as well as I do. Uh, and and back in the day, Indeed and Simply Hired were sort of both companies coming up in vertical search. Uh, yeah. Jobster was there, but we'll we'll save them for a different day. <laughs> and where Indeed was super focused on speed, ease of use, basically being Google uh, for jobs. Simply yeah. Hired was like, well, we have fifty million, we have five x what Indeed has in funding. What do we? What else are we get into? Like, let's throw banner ads up. Let's do uh, resume uh, writing help. Let's do like all these things that were unfocused and not like core to the business. You could argue that it was a fringe function of it, but to me, like an HR platform for everything uh, remote to like being a job marketplace where, where employers can find people is totally taking your eye off the ball. And you're competing with Deal and Rippling and Oyster and some big, you know, high, high, high dollar competition you can't afford to be unfocused. I'm also reminded of Handshake, uh, the college recruiting site out there. Uh, the last round of funding they got, they talked about taking on LinkedIn, uh, which is just stupid, but it's also unfocused and taking your mind off or your, your eye off the ball. It's pretty common. You get a bunch of money. Investors go, okay, how are we going to add a billion dollars to the, to the bottom line? You go, well, let's see. Let's add jobs. Let's take on LinkedIn. Let's uh, be a streaming service. Like people just lose their minds when they get a lot of money. And from my perspective, this is a dangerous road, uh, for remote to be on. I don't think they hmm. should be getting into the Upwork Fiverr business. They should stay laser focused on what they do being the best at it. They already have the best name arguably for what they do. Uh, now if they'd started out as a remote work thing, then that's one thing, but they didn't start out that way. I think they're at real risk of, of screwing it up. But what do Time I know? I've only been around. I've only been around for 20, <laughs> 25 years. Let's take another quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about, well, one of my favorite topics. Oh, my God. I'm a Chipotle. Chipotle is my life. Well, we talked about uh, Job AdX's programmatic advertising and Text Kernel's AI. I want you to now meet Pando IQ, which brings two great tastes together, programmatic and AI. That's right. Amplify your recruitment reach and target more qualified candidates with Pando Logic's programmatic job advertising platform, Pando IQ. Pando IQ, a best in class programmatic job advertising platform. With a candidate management dashboard and conversational AI, that's a chat bot to you and I, Jim, for a deeper level mm -hmm. of engagement without the heavy lifting or hassles. And Panda was acquired by Veritone, a pioneer in AI who also recently acquired Broadbean, the leader in job distribution. So how many flavors can you actually put onto one solution and have it still taste great? That's Pando IQ. More than enough reasons to give them a look. Uh, everything that Pando has, Pando Logic has to offer, 
is something that you should be looking into. You can learn more by just going to pandologic.com. That's P-A-N-D-O-L-O-G-I-C.com. All right, Jim, it's Chipotle time. Oh my God, I'm a Chipotle. Chipotle is my life. All right, so this one's straight out of sitcom land. Uh, Rosemary mm. Hain, 39 year old, received a minimal sentence for assaulting a Chipotle worker in Ohio. Judge Gilligan <laughs> is his name, criticized her behavior, offering her an alternative to reduce her jail time working 20 hours a week at a fast food place for two months. The victim, Emily Russell, left Chipotle, supported by public donations and a new job. Jim, does the punishment fit the crime on this one? What are your thoughts? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. I love this story. I think it sends a message, and hopefully this message will change the entitled culture uh, that we tend to live in these days. What happened to basic manners? You know, what happened to just, you know, saying please and thank you and having a little bit of patience? You know, everything doesn't have to be done in in 30 seconds or less. You know, if you have someone makes a mistake, show a little grace. You know, I think if I traveled through time and let's say that the the if I came back from the 90s and saw that uh, uh, happening, I would be totally shocked. I would think that person is just totally nuts and should be, you know, um, uh, put put aside somewhere to to yep. get some mental health assistance. But nowadays, it seems so common to see these kind of outbursts, and it is really unnerving. It makes me concerned about future generations when you don't have any interpersonal skills that you can't have any empathy with somebody who's doing the best they can or just having a rough day. In the big scheme of things, someone gets your order wrong. Is it really worth all of that? Just send it back and get, the, get what you want. I mean, it's, yeah. Jim, so you're bringing us down me. and we don't do that on chat and cheese. So I'm going to bring <laughs> us back up. I'm reminded of uh, a Seinfeld episode where mm. George and Jerry are pitching to NBC the idea of a show where a guy commits a crime of some sort and the judge uh, makes him someone's butler for a year. And it's like the whole show is based on this guy becoming a butler instead of going to jail. So I thought, boy, art imitating life on this one. Hmm. This person that chunks a bowl at a Chipotle uh, employee is now forced to work fast food uh, as punishment. Now, a little known fact about me, McDonald's was my first a uh, real job. This is back in the eighties and they okay. had the McDLT. Do you remember the remember McDLT? That. It was like the hot stays hot and the cold stays cold. Stays cold. Uh, mm-hmm. The styrofoam boxes they came in uh, clearly destroyed much of the world back in the eighties, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. So another side note, uh, George Costanza, not as George Costanza uh, is in the commercial for the McDLT. So we're bringing this full circle with this, with wow. Seinfeld and my experience at, at, at McDLT and McDonald's. And frankly, all this talk about McDonald's and Chipotle is making me very hungry. So let's wrap this thing up, Jim. Let people yes. know where they can, can find out more about SourceCon and give them that discount code again. Sure, you just go to uh, www.sourcecon.com. That's S-O-U-R-C-E-C-O-N.com. Use the code SourceCon10 to get 10% off. Or um, you can submit four articles to me. Uh, my email is jim at sourcecon.com. And four articles that are peer-reviewed on the site will get you a free ticket. So that's 100% off. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. Another one in the can. Chad will be back next week, unless I get lucky and he falls in the <laughs> channel or something. And happy birthday to his beautiful wife, Julie Sowash. Jim, Yes. give it to me. We out. We out. Oh, oh. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The chat. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. 
Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know, and yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses, and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!